with a dry break, so it's fairly unusual for SVB. Pretty good containment <coughs> shot right there. Looked about as awkward queuing over that four ball as humanly possible and got an ideal result. Yeah, Yohan Chua from the Philippines. He's a top, top player. Is the cue ball going to spin in behind the two? Tried, but he's left an edge. Another Filipino, Jeffrey Ignacio. He's tied 9-9 against Marco Spitzky from Germany. You're know, just trying to duck behind the red three ball in the centre of the table. Well, a first chance in this opening rack, falling to the Filipino. Yeah, a very difficult safety shot that. He knew the one ball weren't really going in an obvious safe position, so he just tried to leave distance. And now we get to have a look at Chua. Chen Seming, it's 5-1 down to Lu Tao. So she's got it all to do there. Johan spends a fair bit of his time across the pond now in the States, playing in many events. I believe he's won a few of the club events over here, so Shane knows he's got his hands full here. He knows the class of Johan Chua. And there you see, beautiful positional shot. Didn't have much room, and he's landed perfect. Shane nods with kind of acknowledgement there, excuse me. Late in the day for big words like that, Jim. You said before, Jim, a couple of Filipinos left in the winner's side but there's still a lot of them left in the loser's bracket. They're all still lurking. The opener goes to Johan. It was a solid safety foray that laid the foundation for that rack win. And Darren Appleton 
trying to extract the mistake here from Wu. Yeah, he's off the board, so good safety shot there. Fairly tough to hit. He's got to go off this top rail with a bit of right hand spin. Needs to try and get back in that match. Wu Cha Ching's a monster. Chris Mellon in the distance has come back from 9 5 down. It's now 9 8 to Dennis Graves, so he's back in that match. Jeffrey Ignacio is the first man on the hill. He's 10 9 up in that game. So did Wu get lucky and leave it safe? Difficult to see if Darren can chop this ball in. I think he can, can he, Jim? Needs his cue ball to bounce. Oh, that's not going to work unless, unless... Anyway, we'll come back to that match, keep you updated. Shane doesn't want to get too comfortable in that chair. Now we get to have a look, see how Johan Chu is attacking this rack of nine balls. So Johan's elected to put a lot of spin on the cue ball and tee the one ball up on the right hand side of the table. And he's done that to perfection. Another young Filipino, Jim. James Aranas. He wins 11-8 over Josh Roberts. So he's still going. He lost early on. So he's putting a good charge together in the loser section. He will go into losers round five. Filipinos, Jim. They've produced some wonderful players over the years, haven't they? Well, they sent a few advanced scouts in the 70s and early 80s. And obviously, the message back home was it's a land of fortune. I wonder if the great Ephraim Reyes is tuning in. Now the likes of Jose Perica and Ephraim. They were the front runners of this army of talented young Filipinos that now make their way to American soil, stake their claim. Two nothing. To a, a break and run out. And there's one thing about this culture that impresses me is these guys don't take their losses too seriously. I mean, with a lot of them, you can't tell if they've ever won or lost. Niels Fyan. He's up against Imran Majid on that table. 
it's a high powered clash as well. All coming to you from fabulous Las Vegas. The Mandalay Bay Hotel and Resort for the first time hosting the US Open Nine Ball Championship. So we've seen a successful break the last time. But it's dry this time, so Shane will get to the table. What kind of shots are you going to have? Not a very inviting one, to say the least. But at least he's at the table. So he plays safe, doesn't hook Johan. He had a lot of all the balls to get behind there. I think he was trying to just get over towards this orange five ball. Johan's just gonna try and bump this one ball back up table, but he's double kissed and gone in off. It's a poor mistake and gives SVB ball in hand, Jim. And as we see this shot again, just slightly misjudged from Chua. Now I'm looking for some problems on the table. And to be fair, I don't see any. Four to five, but it shouldn't present too much in the way of trouble. He's got the angle on the three to just follow through and get up for the four, but from four to five, really. So this is just a chance. SVB needed. And it's gone wrong. He's played a poor positional shot. He was trying to just miss that six. Coming to open play. Well, I said, Carl, if there was going to be one problem area, it was going to be from the four to the five. And sadly for Shane, those words. Well, not the worst result, though. Well, yeah. You would, I would have thought that cue ball was going to fall then, but it stayed up, so that's not bad for Shane, that. And you can see that cue ball just hanging over the edge. If that ball fell, it would be respotted. shot, ball in hand. Considerably easier than his last visit.
So Jim SVB made the positional error, kicked, got a little bit lucky, it has to be said. But the main thing is the score line, and it's 2 1 to Johan Chua. Shane will break, and he's going to try and get this break going, you feel. Yeah, back to the struggles for Darren Appleton against former world champion Wu Cha Ting. Very much like it's going to go 7 1. Just in the distance, you see Dennis Grave at the table. He's leading Chris Mellon 10 8. So Dennis is on the hill. Difficult to see if he's. Got a chance in that rack, of course, so. Well, there you see it plays safe, so. Melin back at the table. Wu Cha Chin rattles the eight, but it fell in. So it looks like 7-1. Yeah, 7-1 it is, and in the far distance, Alex Pagulayan up against Chin Shun Yang, great player from the Far East as well. And currently, Alex enjoying a 5-3 advantage there, and Shane Van Boning looking very much like he's going to tie this one up. Yeah, that was a big break from Shane. Of course, this year, we're using the Accurac system, and that's to try and give every player a fair rack to get all the balls touching. And most of the pros on tour prefer to use that, so there's no manipulating the rack and kind of cheating the rack. Yeah, always been a bone of contention, really, the rack in nine ball, hasn't it, Carl? Even probably for you guys. It's nice to get something in there that just kind of levels the playing field. Yeah, I think over the years, certainly in America, when people have been racking the balls with the triangle, certain gaps in the rack can help you make a ball, and you can even make the nine ball quite regular with leaving certain gaps. So. This is a leveler and there's a skill to this break. There's no doubt about it. As you see, Wu Cha Ching comes up dry. Doesn't make the one ball. As we've seen on the arena many times, you can make that one ball if you hit it correctly. So I do believe in my opinion, this is the fairest way to wrap the nine balls. Darren, no shot on the one, so to play a push. played safe, tried to put the one ball in behind that cluster of balls. Not quite got that. Yeah, a chance for Darren here to try and duck behind that same cluster. Not easy though. Back to Van Boning, see if he can give us an instant replay of that last break. And he really does have one of the best breaks in the game. And he'll take that every day.
Cho Ping Yi is making light work of Evo Hearts. He leads 10, racks to three. Big, big player, Cho Ping Yi. No surprise to see him in winners round four. So Shane, 2-2 two, two. in the balls. It's a good opportunity. Straight follow, right hand spin, play the five bottom right. And he looks to have dropped perfectly on it to play the other side for the six to the other corner. <clears throat> He's got that long fluid action chain. And he really does get that cue ball to move around effortlessly. Six ball took a rattle, didn't it? But it's gone. And that's two break and run outs to get Shane three, two in front. looking for an unprecedented sixth U.S. Open title. He and Earl Strickland both hold five. Trying to maintain that high level of focus and concentration that's required at this level of competition. There we see Niels Fayen, 3 1 up in that match. That's a winner's side match, don't forget. See Shane makes the one ball in the side, so that's the intended break off. Shane gets that break working. Just like Jason Shaw showed you in the previous match, you just sit down and watch because all of a sudden you assume the most helpless position in the arena. Shane doing what he does best, taking advantages of his chances. the seven passes the nine.
Wants a bit of angle here. And I think he's got a little. So it's going to be 4 to SVB. And one of the outside tables, Chris Mellon has run two racks on the spin. That match is now Hill Hill. 10-10 versus Dennis Grave. Thank you. Neil still three one up. Now we've got Niels Fine on the table here, but I'm just looking over at the Chris Mellon match because he's broke off. And both players jumped up because I do believe Chris has got a dead 3-9 combo, but he has to play a jump shot on the two ball. I can just see it in the distance. So I know I'm ignoring this match on the screen, but it's because I'm watching the other one. SVB crunches the break. One ball goes in the side, but he's no shot. So Johan Chua will be back to the table. Yeah, very useful package, though, put together by the South Dakota kid. And if nothing else, he's let Chua know that Push out cold. He's in for a tussle. So he's elected the push out here. Wow. I'm sorry, Jim. I've just looked over at Chris Mellon. He's tried to go off the top rail to play the 3-9 combo, and he's missed the ball altogether. So it looks like Dennis Grave should make this 3-9 combo. It must be dead set, otherwise Chris wouldn't have played it. I'm getting carried away here in Vegas, folks. I'm looking all around the room. It's all going on. Obviously, Shane, you know, pushing out and leaving this shot for Chua. Well, he must like trying to kick this in. Or was it just always going to be a little poker? It was always a bluff. Quick update, folks. Table 22, Dennis Gray made that combination, so Chris Mellon, the fans' favourite, is out of this year's US Open. Extension cold. And quickly using his extension. Let's take a little extra time. This is a big moment here. He's won the last four racks in a row. Yeah, it has to be said, Jim, when Johan was 2 0 up, Shane did get a nice little roll, didn't he? Where it looked like he was going to scratch and it kind of turned the match. Shane kicks at the two, doesn't leave Johan Chua. 
an inviting shot, does he? So he's playing safe. Crucial point to this match now. And you look top of the table at a 4-9 combination that looks dead set as well. So just puts a little bit more significance on this two and three to follow. Yeah, he's trying to pocket this two in the side. And it's close and it's there, but he's been unlucky this time. Cue ball runs down table. Big news just in, Carlo Biardo. Many people's picks, he's out of the tournament as well. He loses 11-7 to Thomas Kaplan. That's kind of a shock result, but Thomas can play. It's bye-bye Biado. Shane Van Bonen. The cool gods are on your side at the moment, it has to be said. As he smiles, he knows. Wu Cha Ching is 8 1 up over Darren Appleton, the former two time champion. He's in a bit of a spot there. Well, anything you can do. That was a great kick shot exhibited from Chua there. So that was a good hit from Shane, good two rail kick. And he's left distance, so that's good news. I'm not sure if I think Johan can get to the pot here, but very difficult shot because cue ball's near the rail and distance. Shot, <clears throat> born hand. That will prove conclusive. With ball in hand, Shane's going to be able to weave this cue ball around the angles and drop right behind that 4 9 combination. Yeah, he could do with the cue ball landing exactly on the top rail, and that is absolutely perfect. If he doesn't land on the top rail, it could have been a little bit awkward. So great positional play there from SVB. Don't forget, he was 2-0 down in this match. He's won the last five racks, and we're taking a timeout. And there we see the 16-year-old former World Nine Ball champion. He was just 16 when he won that. That's incredible. He's 9-1 up. Appleton, if he doesn't come back in this match, he's going to have to win three straight matches in the loser's bracket to qualify. The fountains at the Bellagio. Dancing to the tunes. Now I wonder which one of these players is going to be dancing to his own tune come Friday evening. Who's going to hoist the Barry Berman Trophy as the 2019 U.S. Open champion? Your buddy from Canada, Alex Pagalayan, is 8-3 up over Yang Ching Shun. Alex sneaking under the radar. Sneaking under whose radar? 
Well, I mean, because he's not played on the TV and kind of not really been speaking about him, have we? I'm sure you've had him in the back of your thoughts, though, Jim. I was there when he won the world title. Yeah, that Taipei. was incredible, wasn't it? When he, he lost in the final the year before to then come back and win it. That's another great cool story. Chen Simeng, 8-3 down to Lu Hightao. She's got it all to do. Petri Makinen, 10-5 up over Toru Kurabayashi from Japan. That will put him in round four of the winner's bracket. Sound break, getting that one into the side. Get a chance at the two. And it comes with what looks like natural position to the three. Not the easiest two. Yeah, it's quite a tricky rack, this two to three, four to five. His throat with problems as well because it only goes in the top right and pocket. Something about Shane though and Jason, they just they've got that breakdown, haven't they? Where they're so consistent at hitting a good break shot. And if you can keep it in a good break, you're gonna get opportunities, aren't you? Very similar players in how they approach nine ball too. Very attacking unwavering both brilliant shot makers and obviously both very good under pressure yeah i think the only difference between them is Extension I think jason's probably more of a natural potter of the ball it become it comes a bit easier and i think shane's a bit more he's a bit more cleverer He's got a better cue ball as well, you know, when the balls are tricky. A bit like this shot now. Jason can be a bit loose on this type of shot because your cue ball's got to be so tight. Is where Shane seems to... He's got a knack of making difficult situations look really easy. Exactly like that. What a shot that is. Had no room for error there. And right on cue, Carl. Yeah, I knew he won't let me down there. But he seems to do it at the crucial points and all. It's 5 2. He's faced with a tricky layout. You know, if he doesn't run the balls out, it's 5 3. Johan to break. He couldn't get back in the match, but now this is going to be 6 2 with Shane to break. So, he you know, like sort of kills you all the time. Well, it doesn't look like Chua's timeout did anything to distract Shane or take him out of rhythm. He looked as solid there and 6-2. And now confirmed. So Appleton's won another rack. He's at the table. 9-2. You feel like he's got to try and put a bit of a package together, four or a five pack, to get back in this match. 
can be done of course mm, not when you're missing them no Jeffrey the Bull, the Luna, is on the hill. He's 10 3 up in his match. Simen Cheng wins another rack. She's 8 4 down to Lu Hai Tao. Torsten Oman, the hitman, tied at 6 6 against Ko Ping Chung. That's Ko Ping Yi's little brother. Billy Thorpe is losing 3 1. To Chang, Young Lin, there we see again the SVB break. It's it good and gets rewarded. I'm telling you, if you hit this break shot good, exactly like that, you see where the cue ball come with a bit of spin, you get rewarded. This, folks, is the best break format in nine ball pool. Depending how he plays this too. The three does have an open pocket. And just got to get back over the left hand side of the table. Judge the speed very nicely. Yep, another example there where he could have easily overrun the cue ball there. And then he'd have been chasing to get on the four. Most pool fans that have been around the game know that Shane Van Boning wears a hearing aid. And when he's in matches, he turns it off. So no distractions, certainly noise distractions. Yeah, that's right, Jim. So I think he's landed a bit straight on this four ball, so he's going to have to manufacture something. He likes to just roll the four ball in. Must have been too straight. He's going to play a bank shot into this pocket where he's just potted the four ball. And he's missed it. Surely the five's not going to go in, and it's not. So Johan Chua will get back to the table. A mistake from SBB. Quite a good shot, that, whenever the object ball is in the pocket, sometimes difficult to judge. Well, that's a miss hit. Yeah, he's having a little word with himself there. Yeah, sometimes you get these players when they spend a good deal of the time in the seat. Uh, just don't, there's so much based on rhythm and 
Now he's got to defend, overcut this eight. And he didn't intend contacting the nine either, so. Yeah, that was a sort of example where cue ball had to be per, per, pace perfect, excuse me. And that's where Shane comes into his own, because he always seems to get on the right side of the ball, so. Johan Chua was 2-0 up. He has lost the last seven. Wu Cha Ching, 10 to up. Seems to have been a very one-sided match, this one. And he has played a shocker there. He's an absolute mile away from the seven. Wants to be in the middle of the table. I'm sure Darren at 10-2 probably wished he'd have just landed on this and regroup. And focus. At least he's there and thereabouts. Three matches in the losers section is more than achievable. That was a nice strike. Oh, good recover it. Wu Cha Ching goes through to the winners qualification round. Yeah, convincing win over former U.S. Open champion Darren Appleton. <coughs> Torsten Holman and Ko Ping Chung, seven apiece. Again, the one ball flies in the middle pocket and that is because the cue ball is coming exactly across table, right onto that diamond there, you could see it. That's what's causing that one ball to go in the side. If you hit that ball too thin or too fat, that ball will not go in. It's a highly skillful break. Try it at home, folks, or in your local club. See how many times you can make that one ball in the side using the Accurac. That's a clever shot. Many people, including myself, thought we were going to spin that in the middle with right on the spin to go up table, but he knew he could get a good lock up there, didn't he, Jim? No, he really is keeping the handcuffs on, Johan. Won the last seven racks in a row. It's a tough hit. And if he doesn't hit it, He's going to be facing 8-2. Oh, shot. Ball in hand. So the patience and the safety shot has paid off in rack 10. Quite incredible to think he's won eight racks on the spin against an opponent like Johan Chua. So just moving forward, thinking ahead a little, if Shane and Jason and Ko Ping Yi and Chang Jun Lin all qualify through the winner's side, 
they can't play each other in the last 16. Because I presume they'll be doing the eight winners against the eight losers. I'm going to double check that actually. That's what we usually do. The beautiful city of Las Vegas, Nevada. Tough to avoid the distractions when you come with the sole purpose of winning the US Open nine ball title. But that's exactly what all these top players have to fade. And they're not on holiday. They're on the job. Yeah, I was correct, Jim. Just had it confirmed off the gaffer. It's eight winners against the eight losers from. So it's the eight guys who come through the winners bracket. They will be drawn against the eight guys who come from the losers bracket. Which really doesn't mean anything because there's as many champions in the losers bracket as there are the winners bracket. Yeah, but it's kind of nice that you're not going to draw Shane or, you know, the big hitters in the last 16 it means there's a chance for the big boys. Look at the little flick there as well. Just not the one ball onto this side rail so he can play the combo. I think it's the brown seven that helps it. That's very useful and it's not what Johan Chua would have liked to have seen. A little disappointed in how that one turned out. Didn't quite judge that one correctly. But again, he's got the opportunity to play a very aggressive safety. So he bumped into the three, didn't want to, because he was trying to get back down table. There'll be no safeties for Shane Van Boning. Not if there's a shot available. Beautiful shot there, played it with left hand spin, so that makes the pot a lot harder. Trusting on a little bit of luck when you're traveling that far. You can't always guarantee good position. You can just tell by his body language, Carl. He wants to fire at this too. I don't think it goes in the corner, so he's going to be dropping this in the side, ultra slow. Nearly made it, didn't he? Just caught near jaw, so I think he's left bank shot. You see Johan Chua trying to play the bank, but he's missed it. Can Shane pocket this ball without scratching in the side? That's where the cue ball goes. 
So just at the point. Cruel. Teasingly cruel. Yeah, he's teasing his opponent with that one, wasn't he? So everything at the minute. This won't scratch Shane, don't worry. It'll stop just before that knuckle. Well, has it? It has. So he's all right. At the minute, everything SVB is doing, he's working out just about perfect. As he lands on the kind of 50-yard line of this, but I don't think it'll cause him too many problems. And it doesn't. The SVP motor continues on towards the finish line. Nine on the spin. And he certainly wrested control from Johan Chua and has not relinquished it. Chua's had a couple opportunities, but they've been half chances at best. Chen Siming has made a little bit of a fight back in her match. She trails just 9-6 now. She was 8-2 down in that game, so... And she's at the table, so... She's hanging on in there. Johan is going to be coming back to the table. At three coming in to create the total eclipse. As far as a shot to the two goes. Push, push out cold. So as Shane just figures out where he wants to push this cue ball to. Little results just come in. Joshua Filler, the current world nine ball champion. He's into the loser's bracket. He loses to Shu Kai Lun from Taiwan. Dennis Hatch. 10-2 up over Chris Alexander, the hatchet man, doing well. So Johan decides to go for this two ball and misses it. <coughs> so Shane needs <coughs> one good shot here, striking down on the cue ball, anyway in the middle of the table and you would think this will be rack over and he'll be on the hill.
Just these four balls. Elementary finish for the five-time champion. And this is a case of when, not if. This will be Shane's 10th rack on the spin. He was 2-0 down. Chen Simeng still at the table. She just trails 9-6, so good fight back going on there. Hill arrives for Van Boning. And as matches are winding down on the outside tables, so too does Van Boning see a conclusion, possibly a very early one in sight here. Dennis Hatch completing the victory, 11-2 over Alexander. Chang Yu Lung, 10-4 over Aloysius Yap. Niels Fyan, 5-4 over Majid. Billy Thorpe, another American, 6-3 over Chang Jung Lin. So Thorpe and Dennis Hatch carrying the stars and stripes pretty high. Change sides, but equally effective. One still into the side pocket, and he's got a chance at the two. And I don't know whether the four and seven are offering a combination at the top end of the table, possibly. Uncharacteristic open miss from the five time U.S. Open champ. You know, possibly if that 5 7 are not on, that's what Johan is looking at now. That might be the insurance policy for Shane Van Boning in this rack. Yeah, and the four ball looks like. He can combo onto the eight or drop in behind it. He tried to flick the five out there. Kind of knew if he did flick the five, he would be on the three. Yeah, going to be a series of combinations, I feel, here. Because he's not going to be able to get behind the four, so it's going to be a four-eight combination as well as a five-seven. Yeah, it's not easy for Johan when you're 10-2 down in a race to 11. You don't really feel like you can come back in the match. Tried to break him open, didn't he? And he might just give these a whack. What do you do, Jim? 10-2 down. Well, he had a look at playing it cushion first to try and make the seven. There's 
Is he going to try and play the snook or very thin hit? Very inventive shot there. Fair play to Johan. Would have been very easy to kind of give up on that shot at the score line. So it's nice to see still playing the correct shots and digging in. Of course, SVB, two rails, kicks the five in. Chen Ming lost that rack, so she's 10 six down. She's got it all to do. Shane needs this seven to slow down, otherwise, he's left it. And it gets from bad to worse for Johan Chua. Wins the first two racks in this matches and then loses 11 straight. SVB advances to the winner's qualification match. Very solid performance as usual. So Shane joins his countryman Dennis Hatch remaining undefeated